Hello folks, this is Mike, PC31, The Vinyl Policeman, and uh, this is my video response to Rob Walker's 2023 Vinyl Thread. I've, uh, I'm coming up to my first year in the VC, a couple of days' time, and my very first video last year was uh, in response to Rob's 2022 Vinyl Tag, so really pleased to do this one. Great questions again, get you thinking, get you digging into your collection, which is absolutely brilliant. So I should be, you know, quite snappy because uh, I know there's lots and lots of these to see and I want to see them all as well so uh, I, I should keep this uh, as punchy as I can. So my first one, favourite new release of 2022. Well the other day I did my um, 2022 new release top 10 so if you've seen it already absolutely no surprise at all but it was Lucifer on the Sofa uh, Spoon. Fantastic album really good so that was my top release of 2022 check out my top 10 although i've completely ruined it for you now because you've seen the number one <laughs> last band or solo artist you saw live a few months ago i saw um, a wonderful show in a relatively small venue and it was hugh cornwall the ex uh, ex front man lead from uh, ex front man of the stranglers and uh, this is his um album from a few years back called monster but um Hugh did the first set of an hour. He had a bass player and a drummer with him. They did all Stranglers classics. And then the second hour, he did all solo material. And it was superb. And I know a few people are going to see him um, next year. And really, I think Andy Glavin's going to see him. And uh, you'll really enjoy it. Absolutely fantastic. So that's my last band solo artist you saw last year. Their first album was the best. Clue? Lots of great debut albums, actually. I've seen a few people show My Aim Is True, Elvis, which is, I think, one of the greatest debut albums. And I, and I would have shown that, but i say others have shown it, and, you know, quite rightly. But I'm going to show um, Killing Joke's debut album from 1980. I think it was 1980. Um, they've they've made some fantastic albums, and um, they've moved into... They've, they've become a lot heavier, a lot more industrial, etc., but this one is still, when I play, when I'm in a Killing Joke mood, I, I don't know, 50, 60% of the time, I still pull this album because I love it so much. Material on it is so, so strong, so classic. So first album was their best for me, Killing Joke. Hat Trick, struggled with this one like a lot of other folks are saying because of the, the cassette. Um, I didn't use to have many pre-record cassettes. Used to do a lot of taping on, on cassettes. Um... I've probably still got some around in, in, in the attic and things, but I thought what I'd show is an album that I've got kind of lots of versions of and they're slightly different reasons. And that's Bruce's Born to Run. This is my one which I've shown a few times now, my upside down front cover, a first press Dutch copy. Uh, I've got a few normal ones as well. The misspelt John Lando, etc., etc. But Born to Run, which I've also got on cd and i've also got the box the uh, 30th anniversary box set which has got kind of the um the, the very famous hammersmith odeon in london 1970 75 uh, 1975 show uh was the making of born to run and then a remastered born to run so and i've got songbook and i love the album darkness on the edge of town is my favorite bruce album but this would be my, my second one okay so Album that starts and ends with the same letter. And again, I, I've heard a lot of folks say that uh, this is a bit more tricky than they thought. But I've kind of got this one fairly soon, which was a surprise. Rolling Stones, Sticky Fingers, S. S at the front, S at the back there. And this is my second press with the zip, but it's not the thick, the wide zipper. It's, it's a second press one. But uh, that's one of my favourite Rolling Stones albums, actually. Fantastic. Sticky Fingers, someone who was born in the same year as you. I, I've, I'm i actually in a year where there's a lot of artists born. Paul Weller, um, I think Prince, Madonna. Um, oh, there's a whole host. I can't remember a lot of them now. So I thought what I'd cho choose is the artist who was born closest to the date I was born. And um, I was born a few days before Kate Bush. And I was born a day after... Sonic Youth, not Kim Gordon, Thurston Moore, who was born on the 25th of July, 1958, and I was born on the 26th. So lots and lots of artists in 1958, so I had a lot to choose from, but 
This is, as I say, an artist just a day before me. Um, most listened to album 2022. Okay, I collect vinyl, lots and lots of vinyl. My most listened to album of 2022 has never had a vinyl release. So, uh, and it is, I wanted to be genuine about it. What album have I really, really hammered to death this year? And it's um, one of my absolute favourite bands, Comsat Angels. And their final album from 1995, which is called The Glamour. I've got several copies of this and there's a, a good reason for that because um one of the one of the versions came out with various pieces of artwork in this, this one did uh various pieces of artwork um one of them had more tracks had had some more um additional tracks put on some more mixes so i've got every conceivable version of the glamour but uh the comsat angels sheffield band um Last album, 19, 1995, The Glamour, Comsat Angels, brilliant. Most listened to artists in 2022. Well, um, regular viewers, you know, I'm in, I'm in a Kinks tribute band. So this has been a big Kinks year for me where I did a ranking earlier on the year of the 24 studio albums by the Kinks. And um, I've just been playing lots and lots of Kinks and the band have been learning lots and lots of new Kinks numbers and various things. So I thought... Yeah, it's prob it probably is the Kinks. I've played more than anybody else. So I thought I'd show my favourite album of theirs from 1969. Yes, 69, yeah. Um, Arthur. Wonderful album. So clever. Never tire of it. Absolutely. In fact, the more I hear it, the more I love it. It's a brilliant album. There we go. Um, Australian Artist Band. Well, I've absolutely this year... Um, Courtney Barrett, uh, Court Courtney Barnett, sorry, Courtney Barnett. Uh, this album, Tell Me How You Really Feel. I've got three of those now, and um, Ben Rankins um, over in Melbourne, Australia, is a big fan and uh, has helped me with some of these, and um, Andy Gladwin, also a big fan. But um, absolutely superb artist. Listen to an awful lot of Courtney's this last year and um, I was certainly but I've got three I've got three albums now studio albums and I think there's just a couple of EPs I need to get and there's a collaboration that she did with Kurt Vile which I haven't got yet but it did lead me to buy Kurt Vile's album this year um, along and along with Randy Weaver showing it as well but um, Courtney Barnett brilliant Australian artist really recommend surprising purchase of 2022 this is a strange one but really enjoyable i mean to be honest i probably won't play it very much but when when i sat down with my wife and we played it and we really enjoyed it and uh it's marion faithful with one of another one of my favorite australian artists actually warren ellis and this was a double album she made called she walks in beauty stunning artwork actually throughout um and basically this is 18th 19th century poetry and it's put to music by Warren Ellis and also Brian Eno's on this album and Nick Cave. So you can imagine the music is fantastic ambient music behind the poetry, which is read by uh, Marion Faithful's husky voice. So it's kind of a, a surprising purchase of 2022. But yeah, it's one I'm really pleased to have in the collection and uh, beautiful artwork. Absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. An artist, band or artist you're complete on. Uh, I'm actually complete on probably... I don't know, half a dozen artists. Um, I do enjoy collecting, if I'm really into an artist, to collect all the studio albums at the very least. But an artist, I've got all studio albums and lots and lots of others, bootlegs and various things, is The Clash. And I've pulled this one because for me, this is top three album ever made. Maybe the best double album ever made. Obviously, White Album's very close, but this probably is for me the best that best double album ever made i think it's flawless staggering album london calling the clash a great run of three albums um this was a good one rob this really got me thinking and there's a few i've could have done here actually um seen floyd shown and various other ones which is which is great but the one i've gone for and i've gone for this because um, i saw them at this time kind of mid 70s and as soon as the third album was complete and the fourth one came out, 
The fourth one was gigantic, massive single, but for me, they started to go downhill. Loads of people would disagree with me. Um, but for me, the, the run of three, queen one, queen two, and for me, Queen's masterpiece, they've never bettered it, Sheer Heart Attack. And I saw them on the Sheer Heart Attack tour and they were a real rock band. They were absolutely superb. Went too poppy after that for me, but um, as I say, I know lots will disagree, which is which is great. Um, but that's my uh, great run of three albums. 80s soundtrack. I haven't got a huge amount of soundtracks. Um, I, the soundtracks I've got tend to be Nick Cave, Warren Ellis, a little bit of PJ Harvey, very ambient kind of soundtracks. Oh, some Brian Eno as well. But they tend to be kind of, you know, quite quite modern ones. Um, I had Purple Rain Prince, which I think is fabulous, and I was going to show that. Then I realised somebody borrowed it about 25 years ago and never given it back. So I had to go for another one. And then, th this is a classic actually, because if Rob hadn't asked this question, I wouldn't have pulled this album out and I've been playing it I've played it about three times a day and I forgot how good it was and it's Peter Gabriel's Birdie from 1985 it's based on um it's all instrumental it, it's really good lots of drum rhythms lots of synths as you imagine for Peter Gabriel um very much focusing on the music from Gabriel 4 bit of Gabriel 3 Gabriel 3 is my favorite Gabriel album but um, it's, a, it's a very good soundtrack, actually. And thanks, Rob, as I say, because I uh, I wouldn't have pulled that if it weren't for this thread. So, excellent. Okay, we lost them in 2022. We lost the wonderful Wilco Johnson. Love Wilco. Dr. Feelgood. Um, Blockheads. Other bands. Fantastic. Love Wilco. Saw him about three years, two or three years before he died. Um, in a show with this lineup, and they were absolutely fantastic, stonking R&B, superb set, really, really enjoyable. This is a great album, actually. Um, yeah, we lost the wonderful Wilco. Really sad. He was in remission as well for a while. I think he thought he cracked it, kind of thing. But then the dreaded, dreaded thing came back. Um, yeah, Wilco. Now this is going to upset a lot of people. If you're a Radiohead fan. Please turn away now for 30 seconds. Disappointing purchase for 2022. Lots of people are going to disagree with me, but I'm just being honest. <laughs> and uh, the album I bought, which just didn't happen for me at all. Smile. Just, I found it so pretentious. Tom York's voice totally gets on my wick now. It's just, it's just so false to me made up. i know loads of people will disagree you know fair enough and i've seen this appear in lots of uh, folks top tens for 2022 just doesn't happen for me it may well click one day and i think oh god what was i missing but um just i just find it pretentious at the moment and i don't find it an honest album so there we are now next one is number 16 non-vinyl purchase so um, what I'm going to show is my wife last year bought me a fantastic book, which I showed in one of um, Chris Profi's threads, actually, about hypnosis. And it was this book, All Hypnosis Covers. So I got that last Christmas and my wife followed that up this year, which I didn't know she was going to get, with this book, Art Record Covers. Uh, it's not as good as the hypnosis one, to be perfectly honest with you, but it's crammed full of incredible covers and the stories behind them. This kind of focuses more on the actual artist who actually designed the sleeve. Um, but yeah, really good book. A real sweet coffee table book. When you listen to a record, you flick through, you look up an album at the back and then you find out all about it. Very good book. Please with that. Uh, you found a growl. This isn't a growl as in cost lots of money, hard to find, nothing like that at all. But there's one, there's... An album which I've kind of known about for years and years. It appears when you see a top Rolling Stone top 500 and um, all these various charts which show the greatest albums ever. This album always tends to be top 20. And I've listened to a few things on it, but I've always thought to myself, I really must buy that album because I think it's the kind of thing I'd like. Um, so this is a reissue, probably cost about £18. Pounds, so there's no great value to it in that respect. But it's Neutral Milk Hotel. 
and this will be so familiar to a lot of people, but it just wasn't to me. 1998 came out, um, Jeff Mangum and uh, other other guys here, and uh, I find it absolutely fantastic. This is, I mean, where I find, going back to Smile for a moment, I just don't find any real, I personally don't find any depth with it, I find it quite superficial. This, I find so much depth. And this is a real headphone job. I've listened to it so many times now. I haven't had it very long, but I'm so impressed with this one. I tracked down the box set, which came out in 2005. There's a beautiful box set. And um, I've uh, got that one on its way to me. So as soon as I've got that, I'm going to do an unboxing and I'm going to talk about this album a lot more. Because some of the things behind this album, some of the um, um, stories, the lyrical content, the, the, the lo-fi aspect of the production, I just think this is such an important album and, and I absolutely love it. So that's my You Found a Growl. Three to go, folks. Uh, space theme album sleeve or song. Ever so simple. Debut album from B-52's The Song. There's a moon in the sky called The Moon. Enough said. Absolutely superb. Fantastic. Show some VCLT or a present. Um, haven't had any VCLT. Um, but I've had a present, well, I had presents for Christmas, and one of the ones I just want to show you, which I know will um, really impress um, Gary at Physical Format Rock and Roll, my wife got me the War Box set, which I've been after a long time. The five albums in Coloured Vinyl, The Cisco Kid. Been after this a long, long time, so I'm so pleased to have that. And that was a present from my wife. Okay, and uh, the very last one is, um, I hope I'm gone on too long, but my very last one for 19, a show and album released in 1973. A wonderful, wonderful debut album from Skinner. Such a fantastic album. And I saw them a couple of times in the uh, Portsmouth Guildhall in the 70s. And they were so, so good. Original lineup. Leonard Skinner, brilliant. Okay, happy new year, folks. And um, I should be searching down everybody's vital tags and have a look at them and leaving comments. So, uh, uh, great fun. Speak again. Bye.